Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and today we're going to be looking at Totally Legit Recaps, Season 7, Episode 14 of My Little Pony. This is Fame and Misfortune. Now, I don't know what I'm getting into here, but, um... I saw the thumbnail. This should be fucked up, yo. Also, for everyone who's like, Dear God, please, for the love of God, never do that again. I make no promises. Mom, you heard me. I'm a little freaked out because I just saw the opening scene because like just that little second I pull it up and pause it, it's like, okay, Rarity looks like she's having a mental breakdown and someone's about to die horribly through unicorn impalement. And that thumbnail. All I can say with complete certainty is if this episode breaks Rarity, I honestly believe DWK will not handle it well because Rarity is his waifu and... I might be a little afraid to see what kind of shit he pulls because this is going to be one of those episodes where it's either going to be very minimal editing because he's not going to touch it or he's going to go to town in all the ways he normally thinks. You know what? Maybe this would be too far, but let's do it anyways. It's like, you know what? No, it, this might be too far. So let's go even further and see where this road ends. It might be more on that level. I'm actually kind of looking forward to it now I put it that way. So if you guys haven't figured it out by now, there's a link below to the original video. If you haven't hit it up, why? Fix that. Link below. Do that. You have? Cray, because it'd be really weird if you hadn't already. Because you have. I know you have. Right, Dave? God, I know. I'm an idiot today. I don't know why. So let's get started. My emotions, darling. Stress, 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 stress. Why does it say can't it wake up? What the? Happening. Oh! Hey, that escalated. I fucking hate all of you. What did we do? Oh, God. That it. Totally legit. Re okay. Yeah. No. Um. Please like and subscribe. Right. I quit forever. So, Twilight's Loading on moves. her way back from her weekly horn polishing session with Princess Celestia when she ah. sees two little fillies trying to cream pie each other. Now. Do I need to say it? Do I really need to say it? I was kind of hoping he would, so I wouldn't have to. But there's no way they weren't aware. He cut to this look. He cut to this smug-ass look when he said it. And he's not even making a joke about it. On the one hand... Yeah. Philly cream pie. And when you say it like that, it really sounds like something that has cheese in places it really shouldn't. You know, I really probably should have said that out loud because that really sounds bad. I'm, I'm just, oh God. But more importantly, DWK got to a cream pie joke, which is completely about the pastry and nothing else. And he didn't jump on that or make a rarity reference. And he even put up a disclaimer that he's preparing himself for what's coming later. I was already a little freaked out. And then that intro happened. I haven't been absolutely morally flabbergasted at anything he's done in a few weeks. So maybe this is one of those episodes. Probably is. She sits him down and explains that that's not something you should do in public, but it gives her an idea. So she rounds the girls up and holy shit, it's the old journal. And what? I'm just like, man, I've still got some of my old playboys from middle school and they're in better Wait, shape than those? this thing. And Rarity's what the hell like, was that? What is that thing? Why is it so smelly? Now, this is a part where I'm supposed to go all wink, wink, nudge, nudge, and be like, well, that's something you never want to hear your wife who say, am I right? But yeah. fuck that, I'll take it. If we even got to the point where she's looking at it and not screaming, I must have done something right. Oh, and Twice like, Jesus fucking Christ, you guys, how did you fuck our book up so badly? This is a record of the most defining moments of our lives that? together, and the you tea. treated it like a is jizz rag. Yeah, we put all our love into it. Pinky, that's gross. Anyway, Starlight just happens to know a spell for reblock 
cataloging books, so I'm sending one to each of you. You know, Twilight. That's, that's incredibly like useful. The kind cleaner. of spell you would know, doesn't it? No, no, no. Remember, guys, Starlight is me now. I'm Celestia, and Celestia's uh, retired. A really nice lady. Yes, that. Let's go with that. No, anyway, she really I ain't. Thinking, like, why don't Let's we put she did this shit on the internet? I feel like people might be able to learn something from it. And we're just like, well, I guess that'd yeah, be yeah. fine as long as the folks who read it are intelligent, reasonable people, and we aren't overly sensitive about any feedback we might receive. And AJ's like, I not making a joke, not making a comment. You know why. I don't know, bro. Don't you think letting a bunch of strangers read our most intimate personal thoughts might bite us in the ass somehow? Like, we already get enough attention as it is. What if oh, everyone starts bugging really us about it all the time or fucking around in our personal lives? And Dash is like, dude, Wait, AJ, what like are you line? so worried about? You make it sound like our only audience is going to be the most obnoxious and socially inept people in Equestria. Yeah, that's I feel true. Judged no reason to assume the worst case here, scenario, like right? So, they published their book also, on the pony internet and Twiggy runs into AB, fucking stoked because it's helping them sell tickets for their spring break Everyone butt stamp beach camp and she's why. all the purpose of the journal isn't supposed to be marketing and for some reason all of a sudden <sighs> i got this sinking feeling that in actually... my stomach and i felt a little nauseous but whatever it's probably just that family-sized bag of frozen tendies and one too many beers anyway so glitty's yeah. filling in for spike this episode and they're I'm on their way home and they run part. into a group of annoying awkward faggots huh I wonder who these guys are supposed to represent. Look, I'm going to dispense with the act. Bread on his back? This oh God! Is and what's going on here? Remember back in season six when we had that episode and I said we'd reached the singularity? Well, who knew it was fucking possible? But <laughs> we've gone beyond. That singularity has destabilized the flow of space They've time, and now we're meta. in some Donnie Darko style tangent universe. And frankly, I'm just waiting for the fucking jet oh, that's engine Donnie Darko? to crash through my roof oh. and release me from this hell it was supposed to be a dream for 22 minutes a week i didn't have to worry about the fact that i'm a 30 year old man who spends only every 30? waking moment jacking off and watching cartoons yeah 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 he's only 30 that there's some sort of dude i thought he had like the voice of a hard smoking 50 year old who's already world weary and living by i'm 30 it. i didn't deserve it we didn't deserve it we were just too fucking oh artistic. oh we didn't i did not need to see some of that oh just we just obsessed over and whined about a bunch of extraneous details so in order that's to plant internet the in ideas, general they had to go one level deeper they created a book a representation of this show within the cartoon itself accompanied by projections of us and then used the interactions of these two constructs to mimic our own relationship with the show don't you see it's super mad it's autismception. Really? So he just stared at the and Glimmy oh. Glam run into Butterball They're and she's playing. just getting fucking reamed by these guys here and she's like, guys, I don't get it. You're bitching at us over a bunch of irrelevant minutia and completely ignoring the actual message of the book. And they're like, oh my god, guys, look, she's mad. She can't handle criticism. I'm not mad. On the one hand, yeah, I'm that asshole. On the other hand, I've also been on the receiving end of that. Not often, mostly because that would imply people criticize me. It's kind of just assumed that I'm wrong and no one needs to point it out. Because they don't. I, I definitely don't need to have it pointed I'm going to get so many comments like, well, you fucked up here. <laughs> I'm just going to ignore all the comments on all the videos pointing out how I'm wrong. That are sometimes actually completely right. I do take them to heart. But we're going to ignore that fact. But yeah, this is... I can see why he was a little uncomfortable with this one because it's very real. Now, I mean, for a lot of people, I guess this would be more a look at the actual process who aren't super involved on either the fan side or the creation side. And since I'm in a weird middle ground where I'm doing creation of videos, but also very much fan, it, it, it feels really weird. And since he was actually making this, having to super think through everything, not just regular think, but super think, it's like regular thinking, but it involves a lot more think of a youtube appropriate word caffeine this way yeah caffeine it, it's yeah I, I can see why this was his rarity freak out thumbnail episode it, it's kind of hard to watch actually
Matt, I'm just trying to get you to look at the actual point of the thing because I think you could actually learn something from it. Now she's mad and making excuses. We win. We won an argument against a famous person. Jesus Christ, never mind. Then they go to check God, on this is Rarity. actually hard to... Oh! Okay, I take back every other time I've used this caption. This is where it belongs. And she's all going, like, but dude, people are oh saying God. mean things about me on the internet. What do I do? And Twice like, uh, just ignore them, man. What, what, what does that even mean? Wait, just don't talk to them. Okay, I mean, so they're I, right, I type but... out my reply, and, and I hit post. Where does the ignoring come in? No, 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 you just have to not reply. But if I don't reply, how will I tell them they're wrong? You don't. This doesn't fucking make any sense. Oh, he no, it makes sense. You're nice. just acting like a fucking lunatic. And then AJ's like, I'm popular, Twilight. I'm popular and I don't like it, won't be. <laughs> See, ladies and gentlemen, this is how we know we're in a tangent universe. Okay. People actually appreciate Darko, right? Applejack. So basically, every member of the cast has some sort of nervous breakdown, and Twice like, dude, this is all my fault. And Glamour's what like, was uh, on that? it's not your fault specifically. Well, and who's yeah, it is literally is. everyone's. Those guys out there are a bunch of whiny belligerent spurgs, and well, you guys are all being a bunch of pussy. When you put something out on the internet or any kind of content, anywhere really people are gonna criticize it and of course when that happens you're gonna defend and people it. are gonna criticize it for no the exact same thing they're praising it for and vice versa into a screaming match as long as you aren't faggots about it this didn't have to be a disaster but the people following you around and dissecting this shit are socially retarded and you guys are way too fucking sensitive so wait you're saying that the solution to this problem is that everyone involved just needs to grow the fuck up and relax exactly well, so there's no actual solution then. yeah nope, it's i didn't want to say happening but... forever and we're all Fuck. Then these guys show back up and they're like, We just wanted to say thank you to all of you. Yeah, our friendship? Well, we were having trouble until we read your journal. It showed us that friends can go through. Oh, goddamn, they're doing the actual good comment thing. Stronger than before. See, my dude, you're looking at this all wrong. Yeah, having a bunch of fans might be a pain in the ass sometimes, and yeah, a lot the of nice them will be annoying, shitty, Honestly, autistic sacks and cocks, but it's all, all the worth it like, in uh, the end because some of those fans good, will give you good ones. so valuable and meaningful that it justifies all the bullshit you have to go through. Up until you get the next bullshit. They'll give you money. Okay, so this was a. Kind of a hard episode to watch because it's not just the entire meta aspect, but just watching DWK not even analyze it, but more just work through it. This is, it almost seems like he was expressly using this episode to work through just his anger at fandom and then his fans and then watching other fans who are unrelated to him. It just, it seems very meta on multiple levels. And I love meta humor and meta situations. So I'm like, I'm enjoying this, but at the same time, it's like, I, I get where he's coming from and it's not easy. It's like, there's a lot of times where I know exactly where he's coming from and where the show was going, what he was angling for, just saying like, yeah, you're really hyper analyzing this. Not so much my content because I'm just a general idiot and I know that. But more like when I've been doing other things in my writing and English programs when I got my master's and I had to actually write a book. And I'm like, oh, you're criticizing this, really? There's all this stuff over here. And you're just, okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, I'm just going to go find that hole and die now. Thank you. Yeah. But I get where he's coming from. And every now and again when I put up a serious piece, I'm like, oh, that's nice. I haven't done it often, mostly because I'm very non-serious, but it's just really more real, this one. Not even meta. It just it hits a level of, there's the cartoons in the background that are an excuse to talk about issues that DWK was very much proactive about, interested in, abjectly pissed and ready to rip someone's head off, if maybe just to make them shut for five seconds. Something on that level, yeah. And it's... He's not wrong. And I get that. And if you spend more than five minutes on the internet, you see that behavior, not just in fandom, but everywhere. Oh, God. Just think of any Twitter thread where people are talking and they have a small disagreement. Skip three sections, three comments, and you're going to see a flame war go off. And it'll just be t people who are plotting murder against each other after a while. And it just gets to the point where I'm like, no, no, just no. And this is that episode. It's basically calling it out. And. I know I've been on both sides of this, and it's uncomfortable because I can see it. Yeah, this is kind of a hard episode to watch. I don't disagree with it either. He's making valid points. 
his criticism is on par and I could see why he freaked out so much at the beginning. It's not so much that Rarity had the breakdown and watching him do that was not what I was expecting because he used the meme and he had fun with it. He had way more fun with it than he should have, honestly. But yeah, I thought this was going to be like Rarity's episode of her freaking out. No, it was the meta episode and it actually hit harder. He wasn't wrong. Just the general problem isn't just... It's not an issue they can solve. And that's even what they said. It's just dealing with a problem they can't solve. Because it's not on them. They did what they can, but they have to learn how to deal with a problem that's beyond their control. And it's not easy. I Good on DWK for finding a way to resolve it, even if it was copying the show, just to have that nice moment. I could have seen him easily cut it out because he didn't agree with it. He's done it before. I'm looking at you, uh, Rainbow Rocks, where the end of it happens, where he's just like, oh, hey, remember that big scene? No, they just died. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's how it ended. They, did, they literally just blew up. So he's not adverse to cutting out things where it doesn't meet his message. So he left it in there. It's what he agreed on. He thought the show was accurate, so he left it in there. And I know I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. He made it accurate. He pointed out a lot of it. He highlighted the basic message, and it doesn't make it any less easy to watch because if you've actually had to been in I was going to say these shoes, but I would probably should simplify too. If you had internet, working internet, faster than dial-up at any time in the last 20 years, you've been in this situation. To some extent, at least. Either one. And it's, it's a little uncomfortable having it called out and realizing, yeah, it's right. So I'm just going to take some time. I'm going to go... Maybe hug my wife and then after she's like, what the hell did you do wrong and why should I be worried? I'll try to explain to her nothing's wrong and I definitely didn't do anything to destroy uh, that uh, thing that I'm probably going to shut up about now. Um, yeah, incriminating information. Yeah, I might be in trouble. But we're going to ignore that and I'm just going to go decompress and try and figure out what I think about this. Because this is a harder one to watch. For everyone who hasn't watched it already, Link below. If you haven't hit it up, definitely go do that because there's a lot of meme face in there, if nothing else. And the rarity one. That was quite used. But all the same, everyone, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you really want to find out whenever I'm going live or I do another video, there's that little notification bell next to the subscribe button. Don't hit that. It's useless. Everyone knows it doesn't actually alert you. <laughs> YouTube actually letting people know when there's a new video. <laughs> nah. Instead, there's a link down below. It's to my Discord. Hit that up because that'll actually tell you whenever there's a new video coming out. Otherwise, thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you later. Adios.